For a while now, I've been trekking down to remote beaches to break some rocks with a group of intrepid explorers from all walks of life and professions. Why? Well, to find some Cretaceous era fossils, of course. A group of intrepid explorers are known as dinosaur dream diggers. And around February each year, over a three week period, we choose to help science by digging up more specimens to help fill in the puzzle of Australia's prehistory. Our digs started at what is now called Dinosaur Cove by doctors Tom and Patricia Rich, and they have continued for the last 35 years. And I thought you may like a little look into what we do. First up, we need to get the fossil rich layer of rock out of the ground. John, tell us a little bit about what we expect to find in here. Hopefully some signs of um, plant life and bagels. Hopefully a piece of bone be nice. Then the rest of us, not in the hole, break rock into smaller pieces. Half of it really has got some nice uh, looking plants in it. Ah yes. And then the other half is almost pure sandstone. <laughs> not very productive. <laughs> <laughs> so at the moment I'm going through the sandstone and just making it into <laughs> It's always exciting to find a fossil and when we do, we put a ring around it and they go to Wendy or Leslie at the prepping table. Okay. It does look worn, which, which says to me that it may have come like that already. Or something of this like. Can I have a look please, George? Yeah. Uh, Wendy, there's a little bit more that fell off the side of the Can I have a look at it, George? Yeah. yeah. You show me. Uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, has a bone. <laughs> Only that, George's first bone. Yes, even better. Oh, that's beautiful. Well done. Well done. Thank you. All right. So, how can you tell it's coal and not a bone, Wendy? It's all about the texture. texture. So, the coal mm. has this coal like crystalline texture, <laughs> and the bone either has a uh, spongiosa, like an aerobarge yeah, yeah, texture, oh, yeah, yeah. or it has a harder texture, but the crystals are very different than the coal ones. They're a different shape, they're a different shininess. Okay. Cool. It's really hard to describe, Drive, yeah. Which is why in training we just get people to look, look at bones, look at bones, look at bones, and we really don't give them too many words. Yep, I agree. It's the best way to learn. It is. <laughs> Once they are wrapped securely in the field, they go back to the lab where Leslie will do a bit of prep work to get them out of the rock they are in. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I guess my expertise has just grown over that time. Mm. You know, I've seen so many bones mm. in 35 years. You sort of <laughs> tend to remember most of them, don't you, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so my basically my job, uh, I don't usually get much time to break rock mm. because uh, it's my job to um, check the bones and see whether they're worth uh, pre preparing. And as a preparator, I've sort of got a good idea yeah. of what's worth yeah. spending the time because it's the time that's the, the thing that's crucial. Yeah. Because there are so many, there's thousands of bones and only so many hours to prepare them. Mm. So um, initially I do give them a, um, a what I call an R number, which is a rating number, which, they, mm -hmm. which I give them in the field. And that's based purely on their cross section because, of course, as you know, oh, yeah. when yeah. you break the rock, all you see is a cross section. Mm. So, from that cross section, I have to decide whether it's uh, a cross section shows something interesting or whether it's a bit of crap. Um, and from that, I then rate it from five. Well, originally, we started at five, five to one when we first started um, rating, which was back in 1994, the first uh, dig here at, at uh, Flat Rock. And um, so it meant that the really good stuff, like the skulls and the teeth, mm -hmm. um, the jaws, they were five, yep. which yeah. meant they would be looked at first. They'd get priority. <laughs> and um, down to one. <laughs> and after the first field season, it became fairly obvious. Or we, we actually got better at uh, working out 
what was what was actually scrap, what was worth keeping and what wasn't. Yeah, basically. of course. Which which is where the word shoulder bones, as you probably know, yeah. you know what shoulder bones are. Yes. That originated from Dinosaur Cove because oh. yeah, we weren't as um, what's the word um, conservative. <laughs> We were a bit, a bit more sort of laric. No, not laric. And that's the wrong word. We um, there was a lot of scrap stuff from dinosaurs, mm. and so you could fa tell fairly well whether it was good bone or not. Mm. And the volunteers would bring, like here, they bring up the, and we'd say, "Well, that's really nice," yeah. and then they walk away, throw it over our shoulder. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> yes. As of nineteen ninety four, we kept everything. Really, Wesley's work is so important. Because without her and people who had her skills, we wouldn't have any fossils to put in exhibitions for the world to see and learn about. We're going to be at the Singapore Science Centre mm -hmm. in, in Singapore, and it will open uh, on the very last day of May. And it's, uh, it has a working title of Dino Quest, but it's, a, it's basically the little L exhibition about uh, Leelanosaura, Tomimus, and the polar dinosaurs. Yeah. So, yes. And the thing that's really good about it is uh, Singapore Science Centre really values the science and we work there as a team of people who are the exhibition people, the people who is the director of the museum, the people who are the designers for the animatronics, mm. Peter Trussler to make sure that we get everything, everything right. right. And Peter Trussler and I got an email last night from Kim mm. who is the head of the exhibition group. Yeah. And she says, we want to be sure we get the skin texture correct. Beautiful. Can you please look at the various kinds of skin textures we're using on the animatronics and be sure that you agree with this. Oh, so where else have how polar dinosaurs ended up over the years? All over the place. I mean, they were part of the Wild Africa Gondwana exhibition, which has been around the United States, around South America, around Australia, of course, uh, mm -hmm. and in Singapore, and in Taiwan, and a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. But right now, locally, we have exhibitions uh, in Block, um, off the Otway Lighthouse, they dedicated a whole shed. It's a dinosaur shed, and there's you know there's a video documentary going on in there. There's some lovely pieces that we've been able to put in uh, mm -hmm. describing the stuff from Dinosaur Cove and the Otway Range. So yeah. those are two places. But we've been all over Australia with these. Yeah. So there you have it. A walk through, a very basic walk through of what we do on a dinosaur dig. We have two dig sites. Uh, we usually visit one in Inverloch and one in Otways, Victoria, and I've dug at both sites. Uh, both have their pros and their cons, just like any field work. So one of the downsides of going on these digs is, well, you're on the beach all day, so there's no toilet. <laughs> You've got to get creative and find some way to go to the toilet where there aren't any people who will accidentally stumble upon you. And I keep coming back to this. Every year, well, when we have a dig, I'm, I'm there. And the reason is, well, there's two main reasons, I think. Let me put it to you this way. You break open a rock and you find a fossil in it. And, you know, it kind of looks a bit like nougat chocolate. It's brown. Sometimes with the white speckles in it, <laughs> and it always reminds me of chocolate. But anyway, you break a rock open, there's this fossil in it, and you are the first person to see this fossil in 65 million years. Give or take a few million. That's amazing, isn't it? And the second reason? Well, the company. I mean, I get to spend a week with dinosaur-minded people. People who study and breathe these amazing creatures day in and day out. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh really? Oh perfect. Big, yeah. <laughs> they get a treasure hunt. Some great company. Yeah, I can dig that. <laughs>